from the time that I was eight years old. From the time that I was eight years old until I was 12 years old, I was sexually assaulted and raped by Dennis Peck. started out with him wanting to touch my scar that I had from open heart surgery at the age of six. It progressed to wrestling matches and eventually led to him raping me. Time, Dennis Pegg was a sheriff's officer, a scout master of troop number 83 in Stillwater, and a close friend of our family. <clears throat> Dennis Pegg told me that he had sexual relations with a close family relative and also my childhood friend, Jeff Hall. He described those relations in detail and I believed him. He told me that he got drunk and naked with one of my close relatives and with Jeff. And he said he had taken pictures of them naked. He showed me Polaroid photographs that he said he had taken of other young boys and men unclothed. Jeff committed suicide on February 10th, 1983, with a shotgun to his head. I was a junior in high school. My brother Jay and I ran to Jeff's house after his sister Brenda came to our house covered in blood, crying hysterically. I remember standing in the living room of Jeff's house with my brother. We got there before the authorities arrived. I saw a puddle of blood on his bathroom floor. I will always believe that Jeff killed himself as a result of Dennis Pegg's abuse. As an old adult, I visited Jeff's grave at least twice a year. Every Christmas Eve, I went to visit him. I never told anyone never told anyone about Dennis Pegg's abuse prior to the night of June 12, 2012. Part of the abuse was psychological. Dennis controlled me by torturing and killing animals in front of me, saying he would do the same to me if I ever told anyone about our secret. My parents, my parents suspected that I had been abused. This 
especially after Jeff had killed himself. But whenever my mother or father asked me if Dennis Pegg had hurt me, I denied it. Throughout my life, I periodically saw Dennis Pegg around town. Frequently, he was with young boys. In the spring of 2011, I saw Dennis Pegg with a boy who was about 13 or 14 years old at the Quick Check in Newton. I immediately suspected that he was molesting the boy. It made me flash back to my own childhood. I had trouble breathing, my heart was racing, and I was paralyzed with fear. For all those years after Dennis Pegg raped me, he was still untouchable because of who he was and what he represented. He was a respected law enforcement officer. He was an expert with guns. He was a Boy Scout leader. No one would ever believe my word over his. In November of 2011, Jerry Sandusky from Penn State was arrested. This also caused me to flash back to my childhood abuse at the hands of Dennis Pegg. I followed media reports of the Sandusky trial on Fox News, on the internet, and in the newspapers. I also watched the Bob Costas interview of Jerry Sandusky. On June 11, 2012, Sandusky's trial began. I watched television coverage of Sandusky getting out of his car with his lawyer, and I saw the smirk on his face. My reaction to seeing Sandusky get out of that car with his lawyer was that Dennis Pegg would never be held accountable for what he had done to me, a close relative of mine, and to Jeffrey. The realization that Dennis Pegg would get away with molesting us, destroying our lives, and taking Jeff's life caused me great pain. The next day, June 12, 2012, my shell cracked. My mind was flooded with images Memories, anger, mostly shame. I drank some beers and snorted cocaine to dull the pain. I went to the restaurant Tuscany Bistro and had dinner and some wine. While I was there, I ran into a man named Joe Rubino, who I had an earlier dispute with over a Harley Davidson soft tail. The dispute ended up in court. I went over to Joe Rubino's, I went over to Joe Rubino's table, threatened him, and told him I would come find him at his car dealership where he worked. I left Tuscany Bistro and drove to a bar down the road called the Greeks. There I drank more alcohol. I then went home 
My house located at 914 West End Drive in Stillwater. And I met up with a friend called Bob Reynolds roughly at 9.30 p.m. Bob and I drank a bottle of wine and snorted more cocaine. While we were sitting at my kitchen table, I remember sharpening a kitchen knife. I was enraged after seeing Joe Rubino. I was enraged about watching the Jerry Sandusky trial on TV. And I was enraged with all my thoughts and memories of Dennis Peck. At one point, Mr. Reynolds said to me, that guy, meaning Joe Rubino, he must be number one on your hit list. could no longer keep my secret inside. I said to Bob, no, he's actually number two. The scumbag that fucking raped me as a kid is number one. Bob's response back to me was, let's go get him then. I asked him if he was sure. His reply was yes. I said, all right, let's go get him. Felt like I was watching myself from a distance. We took the kitchen knife that I had been sharpening, and the very same hunting knife that Dennis taught me as a young boy how to sharpen. I took the hunting knife and gave Bob the kitchen knife. Bob drove us there in his van as I gave him directions. Parked in the driveway of Dennis Pegg's house at 903 Millbrook Road in Stillwater, New Jersey. Through the window, I could see Dennis sitting in a chair. The main door was open and we walked in. I started stabbing Dennis. I said over and over to him, how does it feel raping little kids now? I also repeated, re repeated, it's not so fun raping little kids now, is it? At the end, I slit his throat. At one point, I accidentally stabbed myself in the hand. I did not even feel this. I saw Bob standing in the doorway. I told him to get the van. We then left Peg's house together and went back to my house. From the time that I told Bob that Dennis had raped me to the time that I went to Dennis Peg's house was less than a half hour. That's all I have, Your Honor.